This month, an Australian mother named Kathleen Fulbig, who was put to jail for killing her four young children, was pardoned and released after 20 years, 20 years behind bars. The reason that drove the pardon and release is the scientific discovery that the children carried genetic mutations that were the likely cause of their sudden death. Hello, welcome to Dr. XY's channel. I am a board-certified clinical laboratory geneticist. In today's video, we will go over five groups of genetic conditions that lead to sudden infant death syndrome (SIDS) and sudden unexplained death in childhood. It's important to note that when it comes to genetic conditions, there is really not a definitive line to say these only happen before 12 months and these only happen after 12 months. So in the rest of the video, when I say SIDS, I'm referring to both conditions. Otherwise, there will be too many tongue twisters. Okay, so let's talk genetics. Group number one: genetic conditions that lead to defects in the child's metabolism. Also known as inborn error of metabolism, these are among the most well-studied conditions as the causes for SIDS. Our bodies need all sorts of enzymes to break down food to generate energy. If the enzyme cannot work properly because of gene mutations, sometimes it's an annoyance, for example, lactose intolerance. Sometimes, unfortunately, it can be debilitating or life-threatening conditions. For example, phenylketonuria or PKU leads to a buildup of the amino acid phenylalanine, which is toxic to the nervous system. Without treatment, PKU can cause intellectual disabilities. Another example is MCAD deficiency, where the child's metabolism cannot properly break down certain fats. The child might appear normal otherwise and healthy. However, when their body is stressed, say by a fever due to a cold or skipping meals due to stomach discomfort, blood sugar can drop to a dangerously low level, leading to damage in liver and brain. Death can happen too. The good news is that many inborn error of metabolism can be picked up during newborn screening. An early start of dietary intervention and lifestyle remedies can prevent complications. MCAD can be kept under control by keeping a regular meal schedule, eating complex carbohydrates such as peas and whole grains before bed and exercise, and increasing calorie intake during illness and stress. Infants with PKU should be given special formula that's free of phenylalanine, while throughout their lifetime they should avoid food that is high in protein such as dairy, beans, and meat. Group number two: heart disease-associated genetic conditions. Our hearts contract and relax to to pump blood. Each heartbeat is triggered by an electrical signal, and after each beat, the heart recharges for the next beat. This process relies on iron channels, which are tiny little pores on the surface of our cells. They are sodium channels, calcium channels, potassium channels. It goes without saying that after someone is startled by loud noise, exerted by physical exercise, or emotionally stressed, these channels are critical for the heart to return to its own normal rhythm. Gene mutations that render the channels defective lead to heart diseases. In Kathleen's case, the two daughters, who died at the age of 10 months and 18 months, as well as Kathleen herself, were found to carry a pathogenic mutation in the gene COM2. This leads to defective calcium channels. Cases with this mutation was reported with cardiac arrest and sudden cardiac death in young children. Based on these, the scientists concluded that this genetic mutation is a reasonable explanation for the two daughters' death. Prosecutors argued against this conclusion because Kathleen herself also carries this mutation, but was not reported to have cardiac arrest. Well, in genetic diagnosis, this is actually quite common. Think about those other cases around the world. The parents are able to live to the age to have children, and they, just like Kathleen, would not have known that they carry the mutation if their child had not been ill. Group number three. Epilepsy-related genetic conditions, although their role in causing SIDS are not as thoroughly studied as the previous groups, a high portion of SIDS cases have changes in their brain that are also seen in epilepsy. 
individuals with epilepsy have a much higher chance to die suddenly compared to the general population. And these deaths typically occur during sleep, just like SIDS. While association is not equal to causation and shared symptoms do not mean shared diagnosis, we do know that a lot of the iron channels that we just talked about that are important for the heart are also important for the brain. Mutations that impact these ion channels, particularly sodium channels, are reported in SIDS and proposed as genetic causes for the condition. In Kathleen's case, her younger son suffered epileptic seizures and brain diseases from age 4.5 months until his death at 8 months. The two boys were discovered to carry mutations that cause early onset lethal epilepsy in animal experiments. Group number four, genetic conditions with dysregulated inflammatory responses. So in these children, even in the event of an apparently mild infection, the child's body might launch extreme inflammatory responses leading to things like cytokine storm that contribute to death. For this, it is not likely that we can pinpoint a specific gene or a set of mutations, as it is rather the consequence of many genetic factors combined. Just like during COVID infection, some have no to mild symptoms, while others suffer from life-threatening cytokine storms. In Kathleen's case, the two daughters, like many other in SIDS, suffered infection before sudden deaths. Group number five. Genetic conditions leading to extreme drug reactions. Due to differences in our genetic blueprint, we metabolize medications at our own unique speed. This is why the same medication at the same dose can be effective in one person but not in another, can cause severe side effect in one person but not in another. In a previous video, I talked about a case where an apparently healthy newborn boy suddenly died after his mother, while breastfeeding, took regular dose of Tylenol number 3. So those are the five groups of genetic conditions that lead to sudden infant death syndrome and sudden unexplained death in childhood. These by no means represent a thorough list of all that's out there. After reading the news of Kathleen Fulbig's pardon, I thought it would be a good time to go over them. If you find it informative, click that like button and check out my videos about genetics in lactose intolerance, mental health conditions, and drug metabolism, linked in the description below. Thank you for visiting and I'll see you next time.